Is this your 10th run of the day? Yeah, I'm trying to get in the best shape of my life. But you never run. Hey guys, so how many of you guys are outside walking a ton, right? There's not a whole lot to do um, in terms of exercises except like for getting outside and walking, jogging. Maybe you guys are taking up running as a new sport to kind of get into shape. Um, so with that, I'm sure some of you guys are starting to experiencing, you're experiencing all sorts of like aches and pains. Maybe you've got some foot issues going on, heel pain, maybe you got some plantar fascia. Um, is your knee starting to bother you? Um, you know, back issues. So I wanted to give you a couple of um, different stretches and guidelines as far as what you should and should not be doing. Because again, you don't, if, if you don't run typically, and because the gyms are closed right now, you don't wanna go out and start training for a marathon all of a sudden, okay? Because that's not gonna be so super healthy for your body. Um, but I wanted to give you some tips and guidelines. First of all, if you are going to be taking up running as your new sport, make sure you are wearing good shoes, okay? I can't stress that enough. Make sure you have a pair of shoes that the soles are actually intact. They're not like your running shoes from 10 years ago that you decided to start putting on. Um, walk, don't walk in sandals, don't walk in flip-flops, really wear good, comfortable, supportive sneakers when you guys are taking walks outside. And again, you don't wanna, you know, if you haven't ran, you don't wanna have your first, you know, couple of miles be like three miles. Start with, you know, just start with a mile, mile and a half, and it may be every other, every two days, work your way up. Don't start running every single day. You're gonna start, end up giving you guys gonna have more issues, okay? Now, for some of you guys who are starting to develop um, any type of foot or heel pain, I'm gonna give you a, a stretch that I think is super important for you to do. The other thing is because we're sitting a lot more these days, our hip flexors are probably starting to get tight, so I'm gonna give you a hip flexor stretch. Um, and I'm actually gonna give you another um, exercise as well that I think is going to be super important for you guys to keep your hip stabilizers strong. So I'm gonna give you three uh, three little two stretches and one strengthening exercise that I think is going to be important for you guys to do and start incorporating those into your exercise routine and see if that starts to help any of your aches and pains. So I hope you guys can see me. Um, but first video is a calf stretch actually. So I want to find a wall. Okay. You want your knee for this one to be straight. Now there's two muscles that are actually in your calf. And the reason why this is important to stretch is because when you are walking and running, you want to be able to have flexibility to kind of pull your um, foot up like this. And a lot of people, when they develop foot pain, it's because they actually don't have the length in their calf muscles. So you wanna find a wall, okay? Place your, your knee is gonna be straight on this one. Your heel is going to touch the floor. I hope you guys can see me on this one. Okay, I'm gonna come closer, there you go. Okay, your heel's gonna come on the floor and you're going to lean forward, okay, and kind of do a little lunge. You should feel a stretch in the back of your calf, okay? You wanna hold that for about 30 seconds to a minute, switch to the other side. And then the other thing you wanna do is you actually want to then, after you finish this stretch, do the same stretch, heel stays down, but your knee is gonna bend slightly. Remember, the heel still stays down. And you're gonna feel that stretch maybe a little bit lower in your calf. It's gonna get another muscle that's deeper into the calf. And you wanna stretch both of those. Okay, so 30 seconds to a minute on that one. Then for this next one, hopefully you guys can see me here, we're gonna do a hip flexor stretch. So what you're gonna do is you are going to Come into like a half, like a half kneel position like this, okay? And what's most important about this one, okay? This is where these hip flexors, okay, tend to get tight because we're sitting all day like this. So this is a, sh you know, we're in this shortened position all day long. So we need to really lengthen those because this is gonna be, import be important for jogging, walking, and running, okay? So we come into this half kneeling position. And what I want you to do is I want you to tuck your tailbone under, okay? So use your, you're gonna feel your pelvis kind of rotate backwards, okay? So you're gonna feel this bone rotate backwards. Tuck your tailbone under, and almost immediately for some of you guys, you're gonna feel like, oh, wow, this is 
starting to stretch right here in the front. That is your hip flexor, okay? And then for some of you, that might be it. Like this is it, this is all you're gonna be able to do and that's okay. And you're gonna hold this for 30 seconds to a minute. But for somebody, you're gonna be like, okay, I can do that, but I, it doesn't feel too bad. Then what you can do is keep that tailbone tucked in, but lean forward like this. And when you lean forward like this, sorry, I just lost my balance here. You lean forward like this, you may feel like, oh, I feel even more of a stretch coming in right in through here. So again, you can hold this 30 seconds to a minute, even longer if it feels good, okay? So that's gonna give you nice lengthening of the hip flexors, Okay, we already got some nice length from the previous stretch for your calf muscles. So those two are going to be really good just to kind of keep things stretched, okay? Now, as far as the exercise that I want you guys to do, right, what tends to happen with a lot of runners, okay, they end up having weakness. Actually, I don't even wanna say runners. I would say in the general population, most people are pretty weak in these side hip muscles right in through here. So I wanna give you a simple exercise that everyone can do at home. Again, none of these exercises should be painful, okay? But you're gonna lie on your side, okay? The top leg is gonna be flexed up. Remember, you wanna be completely on your side. This back leg is going to be behind this foot, but it's going to be in line with your body, okay? So you don't wanna be flexed up over here. You don't wanna be too far back. You wanna be kind of in line with the body. And what you're gonna do is you're going to lift that leg, keeping your foot forward. So you don't want that hit, you don't want your foot turning up towards the ceiling or down towards the ground. You want it neutral. Okay? Lift, hold for a couple of seconds, bring it back down. Lift, hold for a couple of seconds, bring it back down. So you're gonna do about 10 to 15 of those, maybe two or three sets on each side. But you should feel when you do this exercise, if you're doing it correctly, is you're gonna feel the muscles in the back of this kind of upper hip right in through here working, okay? And it's gonna feel like um, a contraction. It should not be uncomfortable or painful. And that's how you'll know you're doing it right. You'll feel it right back here. You're not gonna feel it in the front. You shouldn't be feeling this in your thigh, okay? Some of you may feel it down into the side of the leg and that's okay. Usually most people will feel that in the side of the leg, especially if they're weak. This is okay, but I don't want you to feel it here in the quad. You shouldn't feel it here. You shouldn't feel it in your hip flexors here in the front. It should be kind of in the back of the hip and then maybe possibly down your leg. Okay, so I would say between the calf stretch, the hip flexor stretch, and those side leg raises really working on the strength right here, that should be beneficial for some of you guys who are starting to run, walk, or jog a little bit more to prevent jogitis or wogitis, should I say, wogitis. Um, now, for some of you, if you guys are still experiencing quite a bit of pain or discomfort and you know it's, it, it's uh, something that you wanna get addressed, we are doing telehealth visits where we can take you through a functional movement evaluation where we take a look and we can actually see this on video where we can take you through all the movements that we want to do. We can actually get you to help even touch certain muscle groups that we need you to touch to kind of figure out um, what's where the problematic areas are, take you through range of motion and all of that good stuff and really figure out, hey, this is what we think is going on. And here are even more specific stretches, release techniques, fascial techniques, or even exercises that you need to start doing. And it's incredible how that might actually change how you are feeling and uh, get you out there and being able to still stay active and healthy during this time where you know it's, it's gonna be difficult to get into the gym. So um, our information is actually down below in the information box. But for if you can't find that, our website is www.rebalancept.com. That's R E. B-A-L-A-N-C-E-P-T dot com. You can contact us. Let us know that you're interested in a telehealth evaluation and um, we'll tell you if you are able to do that and, uh, and get you set up for that. All right, so you guys have a excellent week. Stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.